Hollywood and today's movie hit service. Thank you for joining us today online. Uh, we're excited about what God's going to do today as we seek His presence and His outpouring. Uh, anybody excited about the Holy Spirit this morning? Yes. yes. We have reason to celebrate. We have a God who's with us. Amen. Amen. We have a God that's with us. As we uh, begin today, we have so many things planned for you this morning. But as we begin today, I'd like to begin by reading the scripture found in Matthew, uh, Luke 11. 11 verse 5. I love the way uh, Luke speaks of the scripture. It says this. And he said to them, which of you, Jesus speaking, and he said to them, which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has arrived on a journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, do not bother me. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything, because he is his friend, yet because of his impotence, or because the guy was rude enough to wake him up at midnight, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, if you and I, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit Amen. to those who ask? To those who ask. Thank you. And I love this idea that, that is painted before us of this guy getting up and going at midnight to bother somebody, to get some bread because he's got some guests coming over. Sounds like something David would do, right? He's a, he's a part of the animal. <laughs> but you know, uh, but, but the truth of the matter, what God is trying to paint in our minds is this. We are to seek God and seek his presence and get his attention. We are to bombard heaven with aggressive, with prayers. Of, of pursuing him and saying, God, we need more of you. And that God listens to those who seek hard after him. Amen? And then listen to that. How much more will he, he give his Holy Spirit to those who ask? And that's what we're praying for right now. So would you just lift up your hands with me if you're able, right where you're at, and say, God, we are here today because we need your presence. We have been fasting for 21 days because we're asking for your power, your presence, your spirit to be with us. God. We want our homes and our family to experience your presence and power. We want visions and dreams. We want the outpouring of God. We want God to be filled with all that you have for us. We want Father God to speak it in tongues and all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We say yes to you. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. But you pray, God, that you have your way. That you have your way. Have your way today, we pray. In Jesus' name.
Let's just think of personally the reasons that we have to praise Him forever. my circumstances because I know that you're so much bigger and I know that you're so able to do exactly what you set out to accomplish Lord God to do exactly what you will say come on let's just invite him this morning to do a mighty work something that you can't even fathom come on something that you could you haven't even dreamed of you know Say, Lord God, just expand and increase our faith this morning. Forgive us our unbelief, Lord God. And just increase faith this morning in this very room, Lord God. Ailments and issues of, you know, whatever, maybe muscles or tendons and back issues that they have gone on for years and years. But I'm just believing with you this morning. Say, Lord, increase my faith. Believe it for healing in Jesus' name.
between having experiences with God and encountering God. Mm -hmm. It's a big difference between having experiences with God where God has done something, God has provided something, God has, you know, healed. It's a big difference between experiencing God in that level and having an encounter with God. And an encounter with God, I would define, to be more clear, as a place where you meet God. That place where whatever happens, whatever way you meet, where you understand that God is, and you understand that God is here, that He is in that place, and you experience that presence in a place where you know that it is you and Him. He is aware of you, and you are aware of Him. I think every believer needs that. And more than ever before, in the, in the midst of all the trials and storms that we're facing and all the craziness that's going on, I believe what the church needs the people of God need is an encounter with God that would seal the reality that I know who he is and he knows who I am. I know that I am his and I know that he is mine. We need an encounter with God. The church needs an encounter. Our children need an encounter with God. Our marriages need an encounter with God. There are some of you who have encountered God. I want you to right now just lift up your voice, lift up your hands, begin to pray and say, God, we need more encounters. We need more of your presence. We need more of your power. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray and intercede. Come on. There's some of you who haven't encountered God. I'm good news. God wants to encounter you. God wants to reveal himself to you. He doesn't make it difficult. He makes himself available to those who seek. He makes himself available to those who ask. That's you. Would you pray God? I'm here to encounter you.
to just do it corporate. We have, uh, you know, we're all together uh, in one service, and the kids are with us. We are just expecting for the power of God to be poured out. We want our kids to experience that with us as well. Amen. And uh, we're going to take some time to pray. And so uh, throughout the service today, is, is we have some prayer focuses. But we have something very special today that I'd like to share with you. Um, one of the blessings of being a part of the kingdom of God is that God calls us to be his ambassadors, to go to the nations and take the gospel, or take the gospel of Jesus Christ to every nation, to every individual. And God has given us the privilege to partner with many missionaries who love the Lord and who take uh, you know, God's kingdom to the outer parts of the earth and experience God where, where they're sent. And so today, uh, I just, we're in for a treat. One of the yeah. missionaries that we, we support, Jay uh, Rastafer, who's our missionary of Madagascar, is here with us today. Woo. And he's got some cool things to share with us. And he's also going to be praying for us this morning. I, I would like to draw your attention to the screen space. He's got a video for us, and then Jay will come up and share with us some thoughts. Greetings, this is missionary J. Perry Rochefer, and we are, we are missionaries to Madagascar, and we have been living and serving here for 17 years. <laughs> We just want to take a moment as we stand here on the streets of the capital city of Tonarivo to express our appreciation to you for your investment in our ministry for these last 17 years. For your partnership, we pray for through giving. We've been able to partner with the church here at Madagascar to bring training, to bring equipment, to bring evangelism, to bring construction, to bring discipleship to the, the 600 churches across the island of Madagascar. But before we tell you what we're going to be doing for the next four years in Madagascar, we want to show you a little bit about what we've already been doing. back in 2004, it was with the main purpose of partnering with the church there, 
the new church planting and evangelism among the 16 million people who lived on the island at that time. But now during our time in Madagascar, we've watched as the population has grown to over 27 million people, and our responsibilities have grown as well. You know, I don't think there's any scripture that better describes our attitude, though, as God has given us the opportunities to do many things that we never thought or imagined. And that scripture would be found in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10, where it says, Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. You know, we went there many years ago with certain ideas and even expectations of what God had called us to do. But we quickly realized that we needed to have a willingness to follow wherever the Holy Spirit was leading us, because that was critical to our success. Thankfully, though, we learned this early on in our ministry, being willing to serve or do anything where our ability to lie or where there was simply a great need to be met. Now, I truly believe this is an important principle if we want to be used by God ourselves. You don't just sit back and pray and ask God to show you what he, he wants you to do. No, once you pray, you just roll up your sleeves, you begin to get busy serving God wherever you can, and then you let him lead you from there. Right. Now, I understand that you say, I'm an old farm boy from here in Ohio, and I grew up working on the farm. We were driving old trucks and tractors, and back when I was a young man, those trucks and tractors didn't have power steering. So when they were sitting still, if you wanted to turn the wheel to move that thing, it took all your strength just to get it to turn just a little bit. But once you got that tractor or that truck rolling down the road, you could turn it easily wherever you wanted it to go. And I believe that's the same in how God operates in our spiritual life as well. Once we start doing for him, then he can gently nudge us and guide us to the place and to the destination that he wants for our lives. So what are we doing in Madagascar? Well, we're still doing many of the things that we went there originally to do. We're still doing church planting and evangelism. We're helping with construction projects. But as you saw in the video, we're doing many things that we never even thought or imagined God would give us the privilege to do. But at the same time, we're very excited about what God has next for us in Madagascar. You see, for many years, our team in Madagascar has seen the need to have an English-speaking church in the capital city of Antananarivo in Madagascar. We're seeing that there's an emerging population of people that are educated, they're young, they're professionals, and they're positioned to be the future leaders of that entire nation. And as part of their desire to be people of influence, both on a national and even on a global level, they're learning and becoming fluent in the English language. Wow. And as a result, they're drawn to wherever English is spoken and used. So this opens a huge opportunity for us to start an English-speaking church that is unashamedly Pentecostal, but can reach out to this demographic of society. Now this might be that young person who's still in studying university, they're preparing for the future, or it might be that young professional who's simply looking for a place in community where they can be with others just like themselves, but happen to speak the English language. But regardless of their circumstances, this would be a church specifically designed to touching the emerging leaders and professionals of the entire nation of Madagascar. But I understand, we don't want this simply to be a church for them, but it's a church for the entire nation. Because we have 600 churches now in Madagascar. When we went there 17 years ago, it was only 40. We have 600 today. Wow. But when, for, for the last 17 years, we've talked to them, what does a healthy church look like? It's one thing to tell somebody what a healthy church looks like. It's another thing to model it in a way they can see it for themselves. And that's what we want to do. We want to model that church. But how are we going to be doing it? By launching what we are calling an Urban Tribes Church. The reason we call it an urban tribe church is because we have people that have come from all 18 different tribes of Madagascar. They've left behind their cultural ways, and they've come to the capital city, and now that they've learned English, now that they're professionals, now that they're trying at this new lifestyle, they are no longer comfortable going back to their old tribe, and they've created this urban tribe that's completely unique. And across the continent of Africa, we have other places where we already launched churches just like this. In South Africa, Ethiopia, Tanzania, Gambia, and in other places, we have teams that are already effectively reaching out to people just like we're about to do. And my wife, Carrie, and I, we're empty nesters now. Our daughters are all raised and gone. And so we said, you know, with all our free time that God's given us, we're going to co-pastor this church together. And we're going to launch this work for the glory of God. But just to be real clear, this will not be an American church in Madagascar. 
This will be a part of the Madagascar Assembly God Church that happens to be led by two American missionaries. But we will, and but at the same time, understand as we're speaking in churches across America, just like I'm doing with you this morning. I understand we are looking to raise up a team from right here in America to go back to Madagascar with us. People who would say, I have a burden. I want to be a missionary myself. I want to go and help you launch this church. And so we're looking for very specific people. And if you say, hey, God's speaking to me today. Maybe he'll speak to you before the end of the service even. Come talk to me after the service back at our table where some of our literature's at. And we can tell you how you can be engaged and be a part of the team that will partner with our Malagasy's to reach the people. That's good. So good. But how can you be a part outside of that? Well, number one. First of all, cover this new work in your prayers. For God to give us wisdom and direction and favor as this moves forward. Second, continue to invest in our ministry through monthly supporting our work in Madagascar. But then also prayerfully consider investing specifically into this urban church plan through financial gifts over and above that. So that we would have the resources we need to be able to launch this work in a way that will give God the greatest glory. And, of course, then pray that God will help us raise up that team, both here in America and in Madagascar. So good. But let me just give you one reason, to, just to help you wrap this around your mind, why this has such potential. You know, a few years ago, it was right before the beginning of COVID, my wife and I, well, actually almost 15, 16 years ago, we, we became um, very health conscious. I used to well, weigh well over 300 pounds. And I was probably the most unhealthy missionary in Africa. And we started on the fitness journey. Now I'm a healthy big guy instead of an unhealthy big guy. And um, about two and a half years ago, we got a personal trainer by a young man by the name of Hamza to work with us. And for about one year, he was our full-time trainer. Hamza was born and raised in Madagascar, and he's a practicing Muslim. And Hamza is just this great young man who is just very passionate. He, he, he's built like, a, a, like an extreme bodybuilder. He, he calls himself the Malagasy Superman because he's kind of <laughs> shaped like Superman. And um, for the last that whole year that he was our personal trainer, we were sharing Jesus with him and giving him Christian worship music. And Hamza was very intrigued by our American ways, even though he's a practicing Muslim. And we told, and understand, we told Hamza, you know, when we come back to Madagascar next time, we're going to start an English speaking church. And he got very interested. Now, here's why it's so important that Hamza needs to be reached for Jesus. Because Hamza has already told us, if you start that church, I will come and visit it. You see, Hamza got an opportunity to get a new job. He's no longer available to be our personal trainer. Because one of the richest men on the whole continent, and including Madagascar, of, of Africa, happens to live in Madagascar. He's a billionaire. He's an Indian gentleman. And, his, and he has so much money. I mean, every one of his kids, when they go to the private schools, they have their own guards. They have their own private security team. They have their own vehicles. So that the family, even though they go to the same school, they go at different times. So that they're not a risk for, for carjacking and kidnapping because this family is just so incredibly wealthy. And this man is also a practicing Muslim. His wife, a couple years ago, said, you know what? I want my own fitness center. And so he built a multi-million dollar fitness center in the capital city of Montana Regal in one of the poorest countries of the world. <laughs> and he wanted the best physical trainer at that facility, so he hired our friend Hamza. Wow. Hamza is now the personal trainer to one of the wealthiest, most powerful men in Madagascar and throughout Africa. I will never have the opportunity in and of myself to even speak to that man. But Hamza... It's his personal trainer who hangs out with him each and every day. Imagine what the potential is when Hamza comes to our church, because it's not if, when he comes to our church, and when Hamza accepts Jesus, Hamza's going to have a platform to speak and to influence world changers like that. Hey. So I want to just say thank you for allowing us to be a part of what you're doing here and know that you're a vital part of what we're doing in Madagascar. So good. God bless you. Yes. Amen. What an incredible privilege God gives us to be a part of missions. Yes. It is an incredible privilege, and I love and I love that you put it out there. We can pray, we can give, but we can go. That's right. I I am praying that there are people called from our body Come that are ready to go to the mission. Yes. Amen. Why not from right here? Yes. Right? Do you believe that? Yes. I, I agree that God with, with Brother Dave, that God is building and, and, and giving them a team. And he can you can be a part of that team. Who knows who God's put it in your heart? But I'm just so thankful, uh, Jay, for the opportunity you've given us to be with us today, to weather the storm, hang out with us, and share the good news and encourage us in the things of the kingdom. 
Um, so we support, we've been supporting Jay for quite some years already as a missionary, but we'd love to give you the time to support him as well too. We, watch. we lift up our offering today or as you give online. If the Lord puts it on your heart to, to give towards his ministry, we welcome you to do so. Um, just, just mark down or, or put on the uh, info box, this is for a missionary that came into town, okay? And we would love to, uh, we would love to uh, assign that. There's also blessed buckets back here. You can, you can give in that direction as well. And also, if you want to support on a monthly basis, you can touch base with them. There are cards back there uh, for those of you who feel so inclined to do so. We're going to continue to support Jay and continue to support what God is doing there. So if God puts it in your heart to support as well, please feel welcome to do so. This time, let's pray. Thank you. Heavenly Father. Mr. Wimber. Lord, we need a kingdom worldview. The church needs a kingdom worldview. We need to rise above what we think is a crisis and begin to see that your kingdom is still at work. That you, Jesus, are still on your throne. That your plans are never deterred. And God, we want to be a part of it. Lord, as we lift up this offering and pray for Jay, Come on, would you just lift up your hands and begin to pray for Madagascar right now. Let's just begin to pray, God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, pour out your spirit over Madagascar, our brothers and sisters there, and those who don't know you and our, our, our Muslim friends. Oh, God, pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit, oh, God. Thank you for giving Jay and Carrie wisdom and understanding, oh, God. For the baptism of your Holy Spirit in our lives, minister in your power, for the team that you're raising. God, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord. Do a mighty work. Father, we're praying for them because we're looking to be a part of a nameless revival. Yes, God. Where only you, Jesus, gets the glory. Yes, God. We thank you, God, that even as we're praying right now, there are people being saved right now. There are people who are encountering you right now. And lives are being changed. We thank you, God. But as we pray right now, you're thwarting the plans of the enemy for, for the people of Madagascar. You're releasing life and resurrection power. We thank you, Lord. Father, we pray and we believe today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Pastor Laura, if you could join me. Well, as you know, we've been just focusing on some prayers and just praying over the church body and asking God to, do, to be present. We stopped all agenda. Uh, we stopped anything like that for the month of January just simply because we want to look towards heaven. We want to get the attention of God and say, here we are. We are praying. We're humbly praying. We're humbly asking for you to glorify your name. We want your power to be poured out over Thank your you church. And not only over the rock, we want the power of God to be poured out over our city, right? We need the presence and power of God. And so what you're seeing today is something that's not very much planned, uh, not very much uh, detailed plan or ordered with, with an agenda because we just want to make room for God to come in and to do what he has to do because we're desperate. We're desperate so that this year would not just be a year of good church strategy, but that it would have the fingerprint of the Father. Anybody with us today? And so that's what we're doing today. Today, uh, as you've noticed uh, in the last couple of weeks, we, we, we talked about speaking to our souls and encouraging ourselves in the word of the Lord. Then we go into praying for healing and for freedom. Today we want to pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So we've been going through the book of Joel uh, in one of the Bible studies and we read Joel chapter 2. And the first thing that we see there is a call to the people of God. Bring them to come up. It's a call to the people of God. As Joel calls the people, come up. To come up, uh, get all the others, get everyone together, and let's seek after the Lord. So, uh, uh, Brother uh, Reno is going to lead us there a little bit and pray into that as we move forward. Like Pastor said, we want to respond to the call. God, through the prophet Joel, tells the people, before I could pour my spirit, you've got to come. You've got to respond. 
So we want to pray. And I want to read Joel chapter 2, verses 12 to 17. Mm -hmm. Here's what the word of the Lord says. Even now, this is the declaration of the Lord. Turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Tear your hearts, not just your clothes, and return to the Lord your God. For he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in faithful love. And he relents from sending disaster. Who knows? He may turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him. So you can offer a grain offering and a drink offering to the Lord. Blow the ram's horn in Zion. Announce a sacred fast. Proclaim a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the aged. Gather the infants, even babies nursing at the breast. Let the groom leave his bedroom. Let the bride her honeymoon chamber. Let the priest the Lord's ministers weep between the portico and the altar. Let them say, have pity on your people, Lord, and do not make your inheritance a disgrace, an object of scorn among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples? Where is their God? Come on. So if you would stand with me, if we yes. press in together, and what we're going to pray is, we're here, God. We, we hear your voice, and we're here. Thank you. And let me just say, for those watching at home here, it's not a physical location, but a spiritual posture. Mm -hmm. So it's not just physically being here, but it's being aware of what God is calling us into and hearing that invitation. And so we're just going to pray, Lord, we are here. We hear your voice, and we respond to you. Lord, we come before you right now. Yes, Lord, we don't want to be apathetic anymore. We want to be present. Drop the scales from our eyes, clear our ears so we can hear the word that you have for us. Lord, and the rock right now gathers together in response. The leaders, the pastors, the congregants, the elders, the young people, the infants, God, we gather today right now and say we are here, God. We throw away the agendas. We throw away our plans. We throw away our desires. And we simply look to you, God. We look to you, God, for here. Do what you have to do. Work however you have to work, God. We ready, God. We desire you, God. respond to you, God. We're expected, God. Yes. We're hopeful, God. We know that you can still work, that you can still move, God. We are here. We're here prostrate before you, God. We are here. Not just, like Joel said, not just tearing off the outside, but our hearts, God. Lord, do your work, God. Lord, do your work, God. We're here, we're here. We're ready, God. We're ready, God. Do what you have to do. Prepare us, God. Work in us, Lord. We are here ready, God. The rock is here. Expect
expectant, God. The rock is here. Willing, God. The rock is here. Turning away from the past and looking forward to what you have for, you, for us, God. We are here. We are here. We are here, oh God. Here's what happened to Joel. When the people got together and they began to pray and they got together and said, God, 
we are all here. It says, we are all here and we're seeking you. When they took up that challenge and prayed to the Lord, this is what the Word of God says in Joel chapter 218. Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The Lord answered and said to his people, Behold, I am sending to you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied. And I will no more make you a reproach among the nations. In other words, God will pour out his spirit over his people, and it will be evident to the nations that God is alive and well in his people. And then verse 28 and 29 says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Yes. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Yes, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Yes. Even on the male and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. Yes. Now, now I'm going to think about it. Now I think it's a good idea. How about you? No, he says, I will pour out my spirit. I want to be among those who experience the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Is that you? Well, Sister Rhonda's going to come up. She's going to lead us in prayer this way. She welcome Sister Rhonda. She's going to pray, God, pour out your Holy Spirit over our lives today. She pray that with her. Don't let her pray alone. Don't let Laura say alone. Come on, lift up your voice and pray with us. Spirit, we come to you. Make us aware, more aware of your presence. We ask you to come in and interrupt our lives. We go and interrupt our fans. We invite you to overwhelm us and flood us with your presence. Make us aware of it. Let your power fill us. Father, your word said that you pour out your spirit. We're asking you to watch over your word and perform it in our lives. When we wake up, when we lay down,
Do it, O oh God. Do it, O oh God. Do it, O oh God. Lord, we know that if anyone had ears to hear or eyes to see, we know that if anyone is able to walk in the Spirit and experience that if anyone gets saved, if anyone gets delivered, it is because you, Jesus, do the work. It is not anything special about me or anyone. It is not anything special, Father God, about our location or anything like that. It is because your Holy Spirit is showing up and doing mighty things we cannot even think of or imagine. And that, God, is what we're saying we're desperate for. That right there, God, is what we're saying we cannot live without. We do not even dare do ministry without the assurance that you will pour out your power and change things, God. We turn to you. We turn to you. We turn to you. We turn to you. Yes, God. We turn to you. Yes, God. Lay us out and change us from the inside out. Do your work, oh God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. We praise you. We worship you, Lord God. We bless your holy name. Come on, there were times where the outpouring of the Holy Spirit poured out in Azusa Street, 1907. By, uh, the, the history tells us that the power of God was demonstrated so powerfully that for seven years there were three services once a day where people are coming from all over the world to experience the outpouring of the glory of God. Come on. The Knox Revival, it was said that Knox would preach and people would just lay out in the middle of the street. Cops had to smell people to see if they were drunk or if they were... If they were just people who were caught under the Knox revival and then they didn't smell alcohol and said, leave them alone because tomorrow this person's going to be totally different. <laughs> what if God poured out that way right now in our city and in our lives? Jesus, would you do it, oh God, in our homes today? Would you do it today, oh God? Yes, come on. You can keep weeping, you can keep seeking, you can keep asking. Let's get desperate for Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you. We bless you. Gave them utterance. 
For our last prayer focus, here's what we're praying for. We're asking God that which happened in Acts, we know that we need to happen in our lives today. That which happened in Acts is not something that's supposed to be something historical. It's something that's supposed to be present and active. Yes. And we want to present ourselves before the Lord and say to the Lord, Lord, we want you to baptize, we want you to baptize us in your Holy Spirit. Yes. We want to receive the power of the Holy Spirit with all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, with speaking in tongues, with prophesying, with the gift of discernment, with all of your gifts. We welcome it today. Some of you have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, and that's been something where you've been seeking the Lord. What a great time together now as we seek the Lord together to seek for that. Okay, so right now, I just want you to turn your desperation up. I know that I'm challenging you a lot in prayer today, but I want you to ask for this. But I want you to ask for this. This is the deal, not just for you, but for others. Because God wants your life to be filled with the Spirit so that you can go and share the good news with God. That's right. So, uh, Pastor Jay's going to come back up and he's going to pray that God will baptize you in the Holy Spirit so that you can be his missionary. You can go out and do the work that God's called you to do. So, Jay's going to come up. Jay, would you come up and pray for us? Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I want to speak very specifically to those who have never received. There was three promises that was made in Acts 20. It says, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, not if. It's a when. It's a declaration. It's going to happen. Yeah. Then you will receive power. Another promise. And then you will be my witness. So there's three declarations that are affirmative. They will happen. It's not a matter of if God wants to do it. It's when he does it and, and what he will do when he does it. And it's for a transformed life. If you come forward for the baptism of the Spirit just so you can speak in another language and have a, an experience with God, you miss the whole purpose. The purpose is for a transformed life so that, that, that you are a different person than you were before each and every day. So you can be a witness of Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the of Jerusalem. It's your community. It's the people that know you best. They can witness to you and say, I see the change in your life. You were this before, now you're this. You were a drug addict. You were an alcoholic. You beat your wife. Now you're a man of God. Whatever it was, the chance for life is seen. And then the Judea, people don't know you, but are just like you. But Samaria is exciting. Because it's the people that live, that live around you, but they're completely different than you. They speak a different language. They have a different culture. They have a different way of doing life. But God wants to send you to them to show your chance for life. And then, my friends, it does seem the ends of the earth. I live on the ends of the earth. Let me tell you, you go any further than Madagascar, and you're on your way back home. Let me tell you, there's people that God wants to call today to go to the mission field. Whether that's right here in Toledo or halfway around the world in some other destination. So if you've never received, or you even have received but you let the well run dry, or you received and you didn't even understand the reason you received, and now you say, it's for a transformed life. It's to be a witness, to say, look at what God has done in my life. And the Buturo totally walking in that freedom. I'm going to invite you to come across this altar right now. If you've never received, you didn't understand, or you just need to be filled more time. Come forward right now. We're going to lay hands on you. And here's the all that we understand. It, it's a definitive. It will happen. How do you receive the baptism of the Spirit? The same way you receive your salvation. You believed it was God's will. You asked in faith, believing. And then you received it by faith. That's what we do right now. We hunger and thirst. Is it God's will? Yes. Does God want you to do it? Yes. And all you need to do is ask. So if that's you, I don't care how young you are. Let me tell you why. Some of my kids received the baptism of the Holy Spirit at the age of only six years of age, and it changed them. They're still different today. Children, you, anybody, you have never received or you, you need to speak, no one can come forward. We're going to lay hands on you. But we're all going to pray as a church to get together. We're going to corporately just believe by faith, and then we're going to lay hands, because that's what we saw throughout. And here's the thing. Read the book of Acts. Every time they pray, they receive. Every time they pray, they receive. It's God's will for you to have this gift. You are not supposed to live this life without this gift. It's yours for the taking today. We're going to believe for breakthrough in your life right now today. I just want to close this room. I'm going to get all this straight. I'm not going to ask you to forgive me. You're going to pray your own prayer. You're going to say, God, I believe it's your will for my life. And I receive it by faith. Now in Jesus' name. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Just begin to pray that right now. And for those across the front, when we lay hands on you, God's going to try to give you thoughts and impulses and words and sounds that you've never thought in your head before in your
your heart, and you're going to be the one that speaks it out by faith. And God is going to baptize you in the Spirit, and you will speak in other tongues today, in this very moment. God, right now, we believe you right now that as we are seeking your face, and God, that anybody that's already been filled with Spirit, you're full today, and you're overflowing. Tell them to stand behind these people. No, they're not doing this alone. You need to participate with them. If you know you're full, you know God's working in your life, you come and you lay your hands on these people right now in Jesus' name. Because we're going to believe God for some divine intervention by the Holy Spirit right now. God, as we lift our hands towards you, God, I believe you for the back of the Holy Spirit in this sinless place right now in Jesus' name. You're going to fill them to overflow. Out of their bellies will flow rivers of the deep water. I believe you, God, for transformation, deliverance, for freedom right now in Jesus' name. So, God, we lift our hands towards you. We cry out. Make us be witnesses to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the very end of the earth.
Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I believe I have a word I have to share with you right now. I believe that God is saying to us, I'm awakening your spiritual hunger, I'm awakening your appetite, that you may hunger for me. You may hunger for me, but you have to respond. You have to respond to the Lord. And so what you're sensing right now, some of you, I believe this is the God is awakening your hunger. Some of you are going back to this place and being hungry for his presence again. It's been a while, but here you are. God's giving you this window of opportunity to respond. Say, here I am, God. I am hungry. I am hungry for you. So I just want to uh, just encourage you to know this. You are loved by the Father. You are loved by God. Each and every one of you, with your request, you are loved by God and you are heard by God. You are loved by God and you are heard by God. You keep seeking, you keep asking, you keep pursuing. And know that God is with you. Believe in the name of Jesus. We're going to continue to pray. We want to be to stay at the altar for as long as you want as we seek for God to do what we're asking Him to do. Amen. Uh, but we also know that some of you have to move on. We dismiss you in the name of Jesus. Be blessed. Be blessed. Have a great day. We're just going to keep continuing to hang out and press in. If you have any prayer requests, if you need your family, you want your family to be prayed for and anointed, here we are. We'll do that. For you that are at home, I want to pray a blessing specifically over you right now. In the name of Jesus, I speak life. I speak joy. May the glory of God be poured out over you and your children and your children's children. May there be deliverance and healing and fire. It changes and transforms your life from the inside out in Jesus' name. Right now I speak life over this church. Resurrection power. Transform us from the inside out of God. And have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.